Hey everyone, welcome back. This video we're going to talk about the cam lodges for the N54. So, originally there's an issue where the original seals around the camshaft create grooves in the ledge bearings which doesn't block oil when it needs to. Now originally these motors came with metal seals around the camshaft. Now the new seals that I installed into here are made out of Teflon which won't cause those grooves. Unfortunately for me, this is something that I had to do and this was on my exhaust cam ledge which most of the time, which I've read on the forums, it's the intake cam ledge that causes this issue. Now pay attention to this portion of the video. We are installing the Teflon seal and we have to slide it on rather than hook on the metal seal like you saw before. The metal seals had a hook. This one we just slide on to the camshaft. All this work that you're about to see in the video is just to change these little seals. Yeah, believe it. Now this isn't an instruction video, this is a video showing all the work that was done in the background. This did take a lot of time, this took 6 to 8 hours easily. Not only that, this is with the right equipment and the right experience as well. Now there's plenty of videos out there that will show you how to do the installation, this is not one of them. We're going to talk about diagnosing this and hopefully you don't have to go through the issues that I had to go through. Alright, so let's look at the culprit right here. So this is my old exhaust cam wedge and we can see a little bit of grooves going on. Not very much, but it is that much that causes just to throw a code. Believe it or not, it's pretty embarrassing. All right, so let's talk about what symptoms I was having. So obviously it's the Vanos codes. This is what's gonna bring most people here, it's the Vanos codes. Now the Vanos codes that I was having were 2A87 and 3100. But the following codes will also apply to you as well. And these codes include 2A82, 2A98, and 2A99. Now all of these codes are paired with 3100, which is the boost deactivation. This is also known as limp mode. And in my case, I also noticed my oil consumption was a little higher than usual. I also saw a decrease in my gas mileage, but I couldn't really notice it just because of how I drive. So I saw the Venos codes only in cold start and I never really cared about it. I would just run it for a little bit. I just assumed it was a cold start issue and then I'd clear the codes and it would go away. And for about a month, I had no problem doing that and my car ran fine, so I didn't really notice anything. Now later in my journey, this started happening more. Suddenly it started not just being a cold start issue, it would happen when I would, you know, turn the car off, run and grab something inside a store or a restaurant, come back, turn the car on, and all of a sudden I would go in the limp mode and would read the code and it was 2A87 and 3100. All right, so before you go out and spend over $1,000 on ordering this equipment right here, and that's if you have the tools. Let's talk about starting from the very bottom and trying to diagnose it, see if it's actually the cam ledges or not. And if it is, which cam ledge you need to buy so you don't be like me and you buy both of the cam ledges, which are pretty expensive considering these are over $500 each. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is change your oil and the oil filter cap, or give it an inspection. If the cage around the oil filter is intact, then you can go ahead and reuse your oil filter cap. But if it's not, you're gonna have to go ahead and change that. I changed mine anyways and obviously didn't fix my issue. And now the next step of the process would be clean the Vano solenoids. Pull them out and give them a cleaning with using brake cleaner. This will be the easiest one to do actually. And it's not gonna require more than 10 minutes of your time. Again, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to do this. I recommend looking it up. But while you're in there, you might as well swap the sensors around as well. So now there's two sensors, is the intake and the exhaust sensor. But like I mentioned, after you clean them, I would swap them around since they're the exact same sensor. And if your codes go from intake to exhaust, congratulations, you found the problem. Now, make sure you don't swap around the cables connecting those, because I've done that before and it just threw my car in limp mode right away. And I don't know, you could probably damage something, so I don't recommend doing that. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is also clean the Vanos check valve, which is on the left side of the engine. This is if you've been using bad oil, or not very good oil, whatever, or the previous owner was using bad oil. This is definitely gonna have some deposits building up on the check valve. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and clean the camshaft position sensors, which are kinda underneath the engine. Well, underneath the head of the engine. Plenty of videos on how to do this as well, but while you're down there, please be sure to swap the camshaft position sensors around just like you did the Vano solenoids. And again, make sure everything's plugged in correctly, make sure intake goes to intake, and make sure exhaust goes to exhaust. Some of my friends have just had to replace their solenoids, and I'm really jealous of them because one of my friends only had to replace his camshaft sensor, another friend only had to replace his solenoid. Both of them are still running fine to this day. Unfortunately for me, doing all of this didn't fix my issue, because as you can already see, where my issue lied. And even though I replaced sensors, I swapped them around, 
I was still having exhaust cam issues, which at that point, it's looking pretty dire. It looks like you're gonna have to replace cam ledges at that point. All right, so this is something I thought I could avoid because I bought an LCI model 335i. And I read on the old forum post and there's not much information on this, which is why I wanted to make a video on this. Anyways, I read an old forum post that stated that this was more of an issue for N54s that were made in 2007 and 2008. I bought a 2009 with a manufacturing date in 2009. However, while I was researching this issue more recently, I also found out that some guys with 335 ISs were having this issue, which that's an N54 built well beyond 2009 and 10. So ECS tuning does have a kit which costs a little over $1,000 and mine was on sale, so I saw that as my opportunity to buy. Anyways, this kit includes both cam ledges, all the bolts, everything you'll need besides the tools. And I'm going to tell you right now, the prices of the tools are not cheap. Expect to spend over $500 on tools alone. But Vehicular DIY did this job without tools and has a great video on it. I'm actually going to go ahead and link it to here. It's going to be in my description. However, being a timing job, I did not want to screw anything up. So I got the right tools that I needed for the job and went ahead and did it anyway. It's not cheap, but... I mean, I had to do the right thing. And I'm not doing a walkthrough of all this because other YouTubers have done an amazing job explaining everything step by step. I would just go ahead and watch their videos instead. Again, I'm gonna link Vehicular DIY's uh, video explaining this right here in my description. Too bad I've already done the job right now because the issue was I already have a single mass flywheel. And I really hope you don't have that yet because we had to find top dead center in timing. It just takes a little more time to do because we couldn't uh, put the tool on the flywheel to lock it into place. Now in my recommendation, I don't recommend doing this job yourself. I recommend having someone with experience do it. If you can do a bad timing job, which can happen, these are interference engines after all. A bad timing job can result in your valves hitting your pistons and your motor being bad. Regardless, I really hope this video was helpful for you and I hope you gained a bunch of information out of it and I really hope you don't have to replace your cam ledge bearings. It's not a job I want to recommend for anyone. It takes so long, it's kind of complicated, but if it comes to be, I mean, I wish you the best of luck. And if this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. Please give me a subscribe. I really want to help my other N54 owners out there. You guys deal with enough. I want to be as helpful to you as I can because owning these cars is not as easy as I thought it would be. And it's a lot more expensive than I thought it would be. But we N54 owners got to help each other out because like I mentioned before, it's already hard enough with these cars.